Hi, everybody. This is Tim Allen for the Flinky. Uh, doing an interview uh, regarding an upcoming concert here in Granite County, which is uh, first of its kind, and I think it's going to be outstanding, called We Are the Bold Concert. Uh, it is going to happen July 29th, and it is going to take place at Winning Off Park. And the featured uh, player at that event is one Brian Davison. So we're going to bring Brian in here and talk to him a little bit about uh, his uh, role in this and a little bit of his background. Brian, thanks for joining us today. Man, thanks for having me, Tim. I appreciate it. So um, I guess let's let's talk a little bit about so people kind of get background. What how did you get into country music and what are some of your influences? Uh, man, so I grew up in a music family back in North Carolina and um, I've been around it all my life. And I started writing songs back for church back when I was I, don't know, I may have been 12 years old, something like that. And so. For me, it's just always been a piece of, of expression for me where I'm from. And and um, and then, of course, guys like Joe Diffie and and I mean, Brooks and Dunn, Mark, Mark Chestnut, all those guys back in the day, Garth, all those guys just really started to kind of tweak my attention. And I was like, man, I want to I think that's the kind of thing I'd like to get involved in. And, and uh, been blessed enough to, to chase this road for a long ways and had a, had a lot of uh, a lot of amazing shows in a lot of arenas all over the country. And. I've um, just been blessed, but but I, I love what I get to do, and I'm, I'm so excited to get over to Montana and have a good time with you guys. So, Now, in reading your bio a little bit, it talks about you getting hooked up with Harlan Howard. Now, not everybody knows that name, but if you're into country music, you know that name. So talk a little bit about that. How did you get hooked up with that guy? So uh, talk about humble beginnings. So I um, I was cleaning horse stalls down in and uh, Franklin, which is a little bit south of Nashville. I'm in Nashville now, but and uh, my one of my buddies over at ASCAP um, was good friends with Harlan's wife, and so they were having dinner one day. Uh, 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 Ralph Murphy is the guy, and um, and his wife Melanie, and she was talking about horses, and he was like, "Hey, I got this songwriter guy who who loves horses, and and he missed them. I, mean, I love horses, but I was cleaning horse stalls. I wasn't like it was just a different story, but anyway, so." Um, so he said, you guys have to meet. And so he set up a meeting and and um, I, I came to the meeting um, expecting just to to play some songs for Melanie. And uh, they were like 45 minutes late. And, I, and, and honestly, the truth of the matter is, is we had a horse get out that day. So I didn't get a chance to shower before I got there. So I smelled like horse, you know, and I'm in this <laughs> real nice office, completely. I mean, I just dirty as you can imagine with my guitar. And I'm sure that may have played a role in the process, but I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, Melanie comes in, but Harlan is with her. And I'm like, oh, it's over. There's there's not a song I have that can impress a guy like him. <laughs> so I sat down and he said, play me what you got, son. And I said, yes, sir. And I played the first song. And he said, what else you got, son? And I played the second song. And this went on for four songs. After the fourth song, he said, do you want a deal here? And I said, uh, yes, sir, I do. And uh, he said, how much money do you need? And I said, I, I don't even, I haven't thought about money. I know I have to pay whatever back. So I don't want to, you know, and, and he smiled and he, he gave me, he just said, here's a figure. You're going to be just fine, son. And so he, so I had the privilege of hanging out with him for, for a, a while riding over there. And it was, uh, it was amazing because it was the best of the best. I mean, he's, he's by far the best of the best in our business. Um, and he, he was just a great, it was like a great apprentice moment. Like I got a chance to kind of hang out, talk to him about different things and, kind of learned that three chords in the truth really means three chords in the truth, you know? So, but it was wow. amazing. I, I cherish that, that time and, and that relationship, but it was cool. It was one of the That's got to be a little unsettling to play a song <laughs> and he just keeps asking for more. You know, it's like I yeah. watch those moments on America's Got Talent where Simon Cowell stops the guy mm -hmm. with a gal and says, play yeah. something else. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was, it was unnerving. Um, I mean, I was prepared to, to play for Melanie because I'm thinking, you know, maybe she hasn't heard the bet yet, but then again, she's married to Harlan. But, but when you know, and all of us as writers, as, as artists, man, when we we have the song, right? And so I let off with what I thought was the best thing that I had, and then when he said, "What else you got?" I thought I was in big trouble at that point. I thought I'm not getting anything here from this guy, and then it turns out that that God had a different plan. So, wow. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, in talking about lyrics. Um, you know, I looked up looking at some of your songs, and this one, the title catches your name, just one hell of an amen. Mm -hmm. But this first verse, let me just read this. Preacher said he died too young, over there toting that gun, 
for Uncle Sam and our freedom, mom and dad dressed in black, they folded up that flag, handed it dad, and started praying. He went out 21 guns blazing. That is an incredible. Incredibly considering this concert that you're going to do. I mean, do you have some attachment to the military with your family or your own service or? So, so both my grandfathers, they, they both served and um, I didn't get the privilege to serve, but they both did. And I've, I've, I grew up in North Carolina. So for me, the high school we grew up from, I say this all the time uh, when it comes, especially to, to a song like um, When Hell of an Amen. But where we grew up, it was uh, you're going to be a mechanic or a Marine. <laughs> was pretty much two options when you left our high school and so for me uh six strings got got into the process and so now here i stand and and i've always i've always had a, an affinity for the military and, and i love the guys i've got a bunch of guys that serve a bunch of my friends that, that are still in and, and um operators and a bunch of different levels but for me uh that one hell of an amen um, you know, we carry thousands of, I, mean, I have thousands and thousands of titles in my phone because we just, I'm listening to conversations all the time and ideas come up. And so, so Brantley Gilbert and myself, we were out on tour together at the time. And, uh, and I had, we, and we do a lot of writing. Like typically my, my days would be, you know, we start writing at midnight or one in the morning. When we call it wheels up when the bus rolls, we start writing and then we stop at six or seven in the morning, crash <laughs> out for a few hours, get up, play the shows, do all the things. And then it's just a, that's a recurring kind of theme or at least schedule in our world on the road. But um, so we were in Indiana and we ha had this idea I'd written on my phone and I kind of chewed a little bit of it out already. The first verse, guys, just some pieces of it. But but I had in my phone one hell of a hallelujah or one hell of an amen. And then I uh, I had kind of carved out a little bit, you know, preach, say, die too young, you know, and then, and, you know, 21 guns blades and just some pieces of it. And I was like, hey, B, man, I got this idea and I don't know what it's going to be yet. And uh, I told him and he was like, dude, that's one hell of an amen all day long. And so we. We carved it out, and then Uncle Michael came. Uncle Mike came in the room, and then we finished up with him. and And uh, that that song to me, um, it's a privilege to be a part of it, without a doubt. It was a God thing from Jump Street. But um, and I tell every people, I tell folks all the time, I say, man, you know, the thing about it is, is that it's cool. It's, it was my first number one song as a songwriter. But the coolest part of it isn't the plaques. It isn't the um, it isn't the the you know the revenue from it. Any of that stuff. It really the things I cherish the most about that song. And we were on tour together, Brantley and I were on tour for almost 10 years, playing arenas all over the country. So we've had the privilege of meeting a lot of people. And and I would see we knew we knew all the military typically that were in the in the arenas for the most part. We have a chance to meet most of those guys while they're here, but while they're, while we're there with them. But I saw grown men, uh, you know, a lot of times I guess I say this first. Like songs have a lot of different meanings. They sometimes they're they're party songs and then they're songs for you know, for I love you, they're songs for I miss you. All that. This song was a song we started and we just we wrote it just for us. Um, didn't expect it to be anything close to what it became. But this song was a shoulder for so many people in the military and you know, like all the battle buddies that, that they're missing. And and then um, so that we I've got those those like emails and those those messages on social media and all that stuff, man, from all these guys are like, thank you for that song. And it got me through a hard time. And to me, that's that's what I cherish the most from this song. But then when you when you kind of multiply that by the idea of not only did it discuss military, which I'm a I'm a massive advocate for and, and proponent for, and I fight from all the time um, on my levels that I can. But then there's also cancer, which is which right is one of the worst plagues that we have. I mean, I think it's just it's it's horrific. And so when you kind of couple those two things together, and you hear those stories of 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 how people it, it's helped people through some of those moments too, man. I mean, it's it's a Again, I can't explain to you how I mean the the, the plaques and the you know the awards and accolades that you get from a number one song are great, but they pale in comparison to knowing how many people it helped in the process. And that's really more what I think songwriting has always been for us in regard to that. So Yeah, I mean that second verse, and I, I don't want to read that. I mean, I would have just encouraged people to go out and and listen to it on YouTube because it is a incredibly powerful song. Yeah. When when you write something like that. And you get that final form. Do you get a sense that you've struck a chord? I mean, you know, one of the things I think we're blessed with in this day and age is stuff like on Sirius XM, where in the two channels that I kind of pick it up from, whole, that those two guys will talk about that whole songwriting process. Yes. And mm -hmm. how sometimes they get something and they just know that it's going to go. And do yeah. you get that feeling when you write something or? 
So, uh, so in reference to that, so with one hell of an amen, uh, I, I just, when, when Brantley and, and uncle, uncle Mike and I finished that song, it had, again, we didn't expect it to, to be what it was. Although I knew, and I said it earlier, it was a, it from jump street. It was a God thing. There's no two ways about that. So, uh, and then when Brantley, the day Brantley called me to tell me that it was going to be the single and see Brantley, I mean, Brantley's a tough dude and he loves, he loves confrontation. He, I mean, he's a sweetheart too. If you know, if you, if you get any time with him alone, he's just, he's a sweetheart. We've been boys for like probably, I don't know, 12 or 13, 14 years now we've been buddies, but, but he told me that. And I said, man, I think y'all are just looking for a fight. Cause in my opinion, it had everything wrong with it as far as radio is concerned. Cause it had soldiers passing away. It had cancer patients, it had God in it. And, and radio just, radio is just trying to, 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 you know, sell ads and that's what they do. And I understand a thousand. I'm I just, the game is the game, but that being said, um, so just to, to, on to your point, we have a song right now that uh, myself and uh, Adam Wood wrote with this artist named Tyler Braden called try losing one. And the same thing is happening right now with that song that happened with, with uh, one hell of an amen in regard to like XM radio found it, freaked out about it. It just like, actually right now, as we speak, it's number one on the top 30. On wow. the but that being said, that song has the exact same origin like it was a God thing from Jump Street as well. So, uh, so yeah, sometimes you can see. Um, I'll tell you the thing I have learned the most is as an as an experienced. I, would, I guess I would say uh, they call me a professional writer at this point. I've had a, a few number ones or whatever, but like I still I just grind every day. But that being said, um, I've learned if you get out of the way and let the song be the song, it's it's better every time. So I, so nowadays, you know, the mature Brian that writes songs nowadays, the me doesn't. Uh, it, is far, far from thinking that it's me. It's, it's way more about what does the song need while we're in the moment? How do we capture that? How do we, how do we bring that to the people kind of thing? And so, um, so I've had the privilege of being on, on several of those that had that same origin, like memory I don't mess with was my most recent number one with Lee Bryce, same kind of thing, you know? So. And, you know, it, I, I'm sure you have Rick's channel, but that, I've heard that very theme time and time again with him and then occasionally from billy joel too that if you just kind of let the song do its thing and get out of the way of it and you just happen to be the guy playing it mm -hmm. it everything just goes in place and and then you know and i'll just tell you too anytime you know it's a god thing if you just get out of the way of that it's gonna mm -hmm. happen you know? <laughs> god's got a way of doing that stuff kind of yes. funny so absolutely um, <clears throat> so this concert coming up on the 29th um, how did you get connected with that? And, and what are you looking forward to uh, in coming out to Montana? So uh, there's some friends, some friends of ours just uh, bought a spot down in, in uh, Phillipsburg. And so uh, Dave and Lori are really good friends of ours. And so I get a phone call from her and she's like, hey, are you doing any shows this year or whatever? And I was like, you know, I'm trying to stay off the road if I can, just because my, my wife and I have two daughters that are now 17 and 13 and it goes fast. They don't think buses are cool anymore. So I'm trying to stay off of them. <laughs> but, but I said, what is it about? What is it for? And she said, she told me what it was about. And, and I've, I, I make it a point uh, to say yes to anything veteran related always. That's, that's just, that's just kind of my own little conviction that I deal with. And so, so I said, you know what, I'll do it. I'll absolutely do it for that. And, um, and then hearing more, getting to meet Bree and hear and hearing her story and understanding the the, the difference that they're making out there and the, what they and the, the plans they have. I mean, I'm I'm a hundred in. So um, and I, and anytime I, I can tell you this, uh, uh, you know, there's a saying that says give uh, get, give more than you get. Right? That's just I think that's life. And if the more if we live like that, more of us it would be a better place. Period. So I look at it like that. And so going out, um, just just pouring pouring heart and love into what we do, and then knowing that it's going to the right place for me. It was, it was an easy decision to make. So I, I called my band. They're like, yeah, let's do it. So now I'm just excited. I can't wait to get there now. I mean, it's like, we're still eight weeks away and I want to go there tomorrow kind of thing. You know what I mean? So, yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Um, so uh, as we kind of wind down here, when we look at that concert, what are some of the songs that maybe might find its way onto the playlist out there? Oh man. Um, so we'll have, we've, We've released, uh, personally, we've released, I think, nine records or so. So there'll be wow. several things on there. But then we also, I'm kind of toying with right now. So this might be a spoiler. I don't know. But um, but so Jason Aldean just cut a thing um, uh, that we that me and Brantley and a few other buddies wrote. Uh, it's called Small Town Small. So I'm thinking about throwing that in the set. 
and then I'm going to go back to my roots a little bit too. So I'll, I'll leave some surprises on the table, but, um, but uh, we're going to, there'll be a part in the show where, where we'll, we'll break it back down to, to the humble beginnings of, of the things that moved me in and want to be an artist and do what I do. So it'll be a little bit of that. Um, we'll have a good time. I mean, I'm, I'm just excited about it. We, we always bring a high energy show and, and I don't know any other way to do it. Everything. My, my wife says that I'm a 15 year old still. And so <laughs> and I'm hundred mile an hour everywhere I go. So uh, you can expect a lot of that, but it'll be a good time. And, and it'll be a lot of songs. I mean, a lot to me and one hell of a man will be a part of it. I always play that. It's just, it's part of my mission statement nowadays. It's like I get a chance to discuss how important our military is and, and how important it is to take care of the guys when they get back, guys and girls when they get back. So there's a lot of that that, that gets into my world as well. So maybe it'll be a good time. I'm excited. I can't wait to meet you guys and hang out and just see Montana. Man, I've, I've got the privilege to play Missoula, uh, Bozeman, like all that area up there. So, I mean, I've been a fan Yellowstone a couple years back. We played a headline show over oh, there. Yeah. I'm just a fan of that area. It's so beautiful out there. So, well, if, we're, if, if things are, you know, right now we've got a lot of rain passing through. Hopefully it won't dry out too much. But I'll tell you that that Winning Off Park is an outstanding venue. And uh, there's a, a rotary concert there every year. And it is just, they've really done an outstanding job with that facility. So I think you're going to love that. That's going to be something else. That's awesome. So far, I've only seen a picture of it, man. But I, I was like, I want to be there now. So yeah, and it's and it's a great hockey rink during the winter. That's the other part of it. That's crazy. Yeah, they freeze the whole thing over, and they play. They have kids hockey leagues and adult oh, hockey. They have a big hockey, uh, the Blues, Blues and you no know, Brews and Blues hockey tournament. Is that what it is? It's the Brewers Cup or something like that. Nice. Yeah, they have a great hockey tournament out there. They do a great job. Phillipsburg is one of those small towns that figured out how to market itself. And uh, they have yeah. some great facilities for that. So, yeah. Well, again, I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. And I was actually just, just going through the other day and I read something about you guys or Montana is one of the, the biggest growing States as far as people moving to right now, which we've been dealing with in Nashville for a long time, man. But, but we're, yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see, you know, what, what Phillipsburg holds, man. I mean, I've, I've heard nothing but amazing things. So. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a great place to live, and some of the folks here don't <laughs> like that growth out here with all that yeah, space and uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, you know I'm I'm part of the accursed because I came from a, a four letter word called California. So oh, gotcha. <laughs> I, gotcha. my wife was born and raised here, so you know I got converted. <laughs> there you go. It probably happens quick out there. I, I could probably contemplate not coming back this way after I spend some time with you guys. I bet. <laughs> it's, it's it's a great place. Well, Brian, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We really look nice. forward to seeing you. Again, this is going to be July 29th. Uh, we are the Bold. Let me put that ticker back up there again. And uh, it's going to be a $30 a ticket, $15 for veterans, and they're going to have a meet and greet for veterans with you guys before the concert sure. with uh, both you and your opening act, Levi Bloom, who's uh, not a stranger around here. Levi's, man, we're looking forward to seeing you guys again, July 29th. And uh, get your tickets online. You can see it at the bottom here of the screen, uh, montanagritoutdoors.com slash events. So Brian, thanks for tuning in and thanks for joining us today. And uh, we'll see you uh, in about, um, about eight weeks. Sounds good, man. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate you, bud. All right. Thanks, man. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye, man. Bye.